Now about the spirit. As I told you, the spirit resides in your heart. It is the reflection of the aspect of God which we call as God Almighty or Sadashiva, because God is one. But one person now, I am one, but I am a wife, I am a grandmother, I am your mother, I am doing so many things, there are aspects of God. And God has got, firstly, the aspect of love, by which He creates a power of His love, which is called as the primordial mother or the Adi Shakti. It is the same aspect is represented in you as the Kundalini. You will be amazed that even, even the Greeks knew about it because they called this bone as sacrum, means the sacred bone, that means they knew that it was a sacred power there. Even Athena, Atha in Sanskrit means primordial. And if you see the photograph of Athena or her statue I've been to, I was so surprised in Greece that they all speak Sanskrit in so many ways. And, and she had this stake in her hand representing the energy. When we say of the snake, it is the energy, not a devil or anything, but it's an energy is moves like this. And so she has the snake and all the chakras in her hand, and she's standing with a dress like that. That is Athena. It's very interesting, that place, the Delphi and all that was so much revealing. And that the, the Delphi, they said, is the Navi, is the, is the navel of the whole universe, which is true also. And lots of things I saw there, which I have talked in a tape, which you can see for yourself. Now, this spirit is the aspect of God, which is a witness, the God that witnesses the play of His love. The first of all is the state where we call it is Parabrahma, where everything is just silent and sleeping. When we are sleeping, nothing exists for us. In the same way, the whole thing like Parabrahma, the abstract, sleeps. Then it comes to its awakened state. Then it wants to, it gets a desire to create out of love. So this power of His love spreads around Him, accumulates and forms another entity called as the Holy Ghost, or you can say the Parashakti, or you can call it also as the Primordial Mother. She is the Holy Ghost. Now, when the break takes place, there is a sound. And this sound is the Logos, as you call it, the spirit that is, that sound is the divine integrated sound, not one sound. And that one is called as Unkara, which is the child, which is the child of this couple. And that's how you get the Son of God. Now the spirit in us, which is represented, is that Son of God within us, which is the part of that, we can say, God, God Almighty's reflection within us, which is the child in our heart, is the spirit, is the abstract, abstract form of that power which is all-pervading, is the spirit. Now this is a combining thing. It has both the things. You can see that because it is from the combination of these a child is born. So on one side it is the reflection of the God Almighty. On the other side it is the connection with the all-pervading power which is the power of His love. So it is connected on both the sides. So the Spirit is in your heart which decides is alert all the time and knows all about you. In Gita he is called as Kshetragya, the knower of the field. He knows all about you and he knows what you are doing. It just is a witness. It doesn't involve into the play of what you are doing. It's just watching the whole drama. As long as it wants to, otherwise when it is now fed up or does not want to enjoy anymore, it just disappears. When it disappears, you do not exist anymore. This spirit has got the nature of, as he has told you in the morning, Sat Chitananda. Sat means that when you become the spirit, you become the truth. Now what is the truth? Truth is this all-pervading power. You start feeling it. 
you start feeling the truth. Now this truth is absolute, you get connected with it. Your attention gets enlightened and whatever you know through your attention, by paying attention to it, means through your vibratory awareness, is the truth. You put ten children together and ask them to feel one person who is facing me. They will put up the same finger, that means something wrong with his throat. Because you become the subject, it's not subjective, but you become the subject. You start feeling, everybody feels the same. Now you have seen these people who have come to help me from Australia and Switzerland and England and all these places. When you come to me, they say the same thing about a person. He's catching on this, he's catching on that. Everybody catches on the same. So this all-pervading power is a complete organization of delivering truth to you. You ask any questions to it. Whether it is true or not, you will know on your vibratory awareness. Of course, in the beginning you have to develop the sensitivity. Once you are sensitive to it, you can find out the truth. So the Sat, that part, means the brain gets enlightened. Your central nervous system gets enlightened. That means spirit gives light into central nervous system and you start feeling it flowing. First time it comes to your consciousness. Whatever people may tell you that this is the way we give Self-realization and all that, just don't believe it. You must know that you should have, you should have the sensitivity of feeling that spirit and that truth, which is common to all of it, then it cannot be denied. Truth is only one, it cannot be hundreds. Once you have realized all of them talk the same, there is no difference. But the problem is, human beings know how to make a pickle out of everyone. That's the speciality of human beings. Anybody who came on this earth, who was a realized soul, said the same thing, there is no difference whatsoever. But everybody started fighting about it. Like the real flowers appear on the tree, when they are living, they are beautiful, fragrant, and don't, they know each other. There is no difference between them. But somebody will take out one, another will take out another, and say, this is mine, this is mine, then they are dead, then they say, this is it. When Christ lived, nobody recognized Him. They crucified Him, even His disciples, till He got His resurrection, then what's the use? Nobody recognized Him. All the great people when they came here, nobody recognized. Christ has said, whatever you have done to me will be forgiven, but not to the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost has to give you your Realization. And when you get your Realization, you have to recognize it. If you don't recognize, that will not be forgiven. After Realization, you have to recognize. If you do not recognize, He says, it won't be forgiven. A very, very Great understanding is needed to understand what is today, such a precarious time. The last judgment has started. So many great people are taking birth, so many crooks are taking birth to harm you. It's happening. How will you judge yourself? How will you judge? Are you going to be put on a, uh, what you call, a balance? Your Kundalini is going to be awakened. You yourself will judge, not necessary for anybody to judge. You yourself will know whether I'm catching on this, my brother, I'm catching on that. Today only one of the Sir Yogini says, Mother, I'm catching on the right heart. All right, we'll work it out. Another will say, I'm catching on my Akya. Yesterday somebody was telling me, Mother, take out this boot from my Akya. Now Akya means ego. They can feel it, they can see it and they judge it because they are out of it. The Spirit gives you the Truth and you like it, because the vibrations flow, you feel so peaceful and so happy and joyous, and you can feel others. When the vibrations are not there, you feel, what's wrong with it? We should put it right. And when you know the method how to do it, you want to do it and you want to be that. The joy of the Spirit, though really felt in a big way, comes later on, but it starts trickling in. People give up all kinds of habits automatically. I don't tell them. They just give up. The willpower is so great that whatever you want you can give up. 
There is no problem with it. So many people who used to take drugs and were druggist and chemist, I used to call them. When they came to me, some of them came in coma. They just came up without any difficulty. Because if you discover your spirit, you just do it. A transformation has to take place within you. If that doesn't happen, it is no religion, it is no God, it has nothing to do with your Kundalini. And when it takes, you become so empowered that nothing can dominate you. No habit can dominate you, no guru can dominate you, no ideas and fixations and all these smaller things will dominate. But you become so powerful that you start emitting light to others and people can see that light in you, that confidence in you. Now the chitta, chitta means attention, your attention becomes enlightened. You put your attention to anything and you can feel it. You can find out about anyone you want. Your president, you can find out where he is catching. You can even correct him sitting down here quite a lot. But he has to ask for realization. All these people have to ask for realization, though you can little bit sort of mold them. But your attention becomes very different because your priorities change. You are not interested in your brothers and sisters only, you are interested in everyone. If you find your brothers and sisters are not interested in God in the real way, you just give up, you don't bother your heads. Then you find out people who are really interested, work on them and give them. So your attention itself becomes, this attention has got all telecommunication and everything. Now the, some of the great miracles people have seen by becoming Realization are so great that again it is not proper at this time to tell them. But I would say that once you get realized, you don't get into accidents. If one person is realized in a car, even if there is an accident due to other people, you don't get hurt at all. There was one gentleman called Rajesh Shah, who actually he's the one who came to Berkeley University, who met Gregor, and that's how I started taking interest in the Eastern people. He's the one who was, he, he had given up everything but he used to, his friends one day told him that let's drive and why don't you smoke, why don't you smoke, so he had taken a smoke in his hand. And as he had taken it, the, there was an accident, he was driving, a very bad accident, but everybody was safe, but only this finger was hurt. No. This finger was hurt, that's all, and he told me, brother. In so many miracles happened, like once in India there was a drought, in Bombay there was not a single drop of water. And Rajesh was so much worried and he telephoned to me, Mother, there's no water, why are you angry, what has happened? There's no water at all. I said, all right, you'll have water, doesn't matter. You want to have rain, you'll have it, you'll have it. And that night it rained so heavily from where God alone knows. I mean, everything can work out because all the angels are with you, all the Chiranjivas are with you, all the elements are with you, even you can find out from the candle. If you work on the candle, you will find some of you, it will get like a sort of pulsation in it. Sometimes you will find a lot of black will, soup will come out. So much so the whole wall may become black. That's the black coming out of you. Don't be afraid, let it come out. Sometimes it will go into tension. You will see even this little candle can burn lots of negativity from you people. The water element helps you, every element helps you. The whole stage is made for you, the whole stage of this creation is made for you. But you should have your self-esteem and not your ego. Then it works out. It's for you, everything is for you and it has to work out. Then is the joy, which Gregor has told you that you get the last because he thinks that we first start verifying it, uh, which chakra is catching, we want to work for others, how to give realization, how to do this all those things, and then when you go deeper into it, the joy becomes established. So the second stage, first stage is that you become thoughtlessly aware, is nirvichar samadhi. And then beyond that you go, you become doubtlessly aware. And at that stage, it's a, it's a state, it's a state of your being. At that state you can do lots of things as you improve in your states. You see, if you are appointed, say, the deputy governor, you have certain powers. But if you are appointed as, say, the president, you have greater powers. In the same way, the powers are there, but all this power is power of love. 
That's one we have never used so far. We have only used the power of hatred. All the countries have used nothing but power of hatred. They have paid attention to the power of hatred only. This is the power of love, of pure love. Not that you embrace others too much and go mad and uh, stupid people, you see, not that kind. It's something that emits, just flows and works. It takes you to the right side. It takes you to the proper side. And it's very energy-giving, life-giving. But the best of all, that it happens in the beginning is that your physical health improves immensely. You get rid of most of your diseases, most of them, except for very few I've seen they do not get cured. Sometimes I've seen so many miracles happening that I'm myself amazed at myself. The way things work out, I went to Kuala Lumpur and we had about thousand people there. They all came and they were sitting in the garden of Mr. Ubedullah, who is the speaker of the assembly there. He's a Muslim. And he said, so many have come, at least 50 percent are sick people. I said, all right, you sit on the ground. And I just asked the Mother Earth, she's my mother. I asked her, please suck their problems down, it's too much. And one boy had what you call polio. I used to think polio may not be cured because so, so much advanced it is. But this boy was brought like this and put on the ground and suddenly got up and walked off and they started looking, where has he gone? It has happened. You may like to, see, you may like to him, Senator Ubedullah, uh, who is the speaker of the assembly and find out from him. I mean, so many people like that have got it. But it's not important because I'm not curing here, I'm not healing, it just happens automatically. It's a byproduct of Kundalini awakening. I'm not interested either in healing people just for healing's sake, because you can understand that. If this light is not going to work out, you're not going to repair it. You are only going to repair those lights which are going to give light to others. So it is important that you must decide that you will give light to others when you become light. That is very important for all of you. It is not only for you, for your family, for your children. It is for everyone. That's why it works out more collectively. I hope we we'll start a good center here and all of you are going to come to it. Keep your minds open and your fixations must be given up. The other day, I'll tell you how the things work out in a wrong way sometimes, how we are fixed into it. Uh, we had some ladies with us, suddenly they came from New York, some of them came from here with the ideas that they have about women and we had some boys. The boys were running up and down and all that, so I told these ladies that you must cook food and give it to them. I see it's the way they should eat first and then you can eat later. And they felt insulted about it. Now if you eat later, it doesn't mean in any way you are inferior. On the contrary, you are very matured, you are very motherly. I mean, normally we would do that way, anybody would do it. It's so simple to us that, yes, the men have come, they're tired, let them have the food, look after them, that's the job of a woman in the household. She's in the house, she has to look after her. she's in charge of the house, so let her do it. But they felt hurt about it. All these ideas come from a sense of insecurity. You should not have any sense of security. There's nothing low in serving others. There's nothing low in being humble. Humility is a sign of enrichment. You see the trees, when they are laden with fruits, they come down to the Mother Earth to thank her. It's a sign. Human, the person who is humble is very near to God. And to have these fixed ideas about things, just forget them. Just become your spirit. It's a new avenue into which you have to jump, which you have to accept, and the transmutation must take place properly. Now, one thing I have to warn again, that the thinking will start. After this, people will start discussing about it. It's better to keep silent for some days and do not think too much. Because whatever ideas you have got are still conditioned or egoistical. So best thing is that it should not be discussed so much as it is to be achieved. Seven days you should try hard to achieve that state. If you have achieved that state, then it will be so easy for you to do all the things that I have told you of giving realization, giving peace to people, giving them collective consciousness, because you become collectively conscious.